everyone, it's another STEM Sunday. I'm so excited. We have a lot to dive into this month. A lot happened, and any of my space nerds out there, you probably know what I'm talking about. But before we do that, Rubik's Cubes. Not much to update, sorry guys. Um, my average is back down to about 23 seconds. So we're doing really well, we're getting better again. Um, hopefully I'll have some updates next time around for my whole goal of solving the Rubik's Cube in microgravity. So um, hopefully that'll be next STEM Sunday. Let's dive into it. This was a Mars month, you guys. Um, a lot happened in terms of Mars. And um, there's three actual missions that went to Mars in the month of February, which is crazy. We had the first one was actually from the UAE. It was called Hope, which I think is very like, I love that. I love that that rover was called Hope. But this is actually the first thing UAE has ever put on the Martian surface. This is the first time going to Mars and they did it successfully. It was amazing to watch because it means the entire world is doing this. We're all going to space together and we're getting, it's not just NASA, it's not just the US anymore. We're all doing space and it's so cool to see. We also had a uh, touchdown on Mars from China, which is very exciting to see. And then we had Perseverance. I love Perseverance. Um, this was the rover. This has been a long time in the making. We put Perseverance down on the Martian surface. It went well. It was a mission success. Um, there's a lot of different things that I want to talk about here. Overall, it was absolutely amazing to watch. The first thing, kind of cool tech on Perseverance, the rover Percy. And we have Ingenuity, which is a little helicopter drone that kind of will fly around and then come back down and charge. It'll come back and kind of land on Percy and Percy will charge it back up and then it can fly again. Um, this is really cool. This is like an engineering test, if you will, because we've never actually like flown a drone in the atmosphere of another world of like, you know, it can actually regulate itself and come back and keep doing it. So this is going to be really big for us putting, you know, drones and helicopters and that kind of stuff to do research on other planets. So this is insane. Very excited to see how Ingenuity does. Um, the other thing that I'm so excited to share, Perseverance actually has a microphone on it. And you guys, I'm going to get a little emotional talking about this. The other day we actually got the first sounds of Mars. We've never had a rover actually have a microphone on it. We could kind of guess what was happening based off of all the other sensors on board, but we've never actually heard the sounds of another, of of the Martian planet. You know what I mean? Like it, it's insane. Um, so I wanted to play that for you. It's really, really quiet guys. So you're gonna have to bear with me. And if you can't hear it, you need to go onto NASA's website and look this up and hear it for yourself. But okay, I'm gonna play it real quick. It's very, very faint, so. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. I'll have to play it back to see if you can. It's like a very, very, very faint wind blow. And it sounds like it could be wind here on Earth, but it's not. It's from Mars. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you how similar Mars is to Earth? And just the thing you just heard, if you can hear it, <laughs> is literally another world. Um, this, is, this is history in the making. This is amazing. Um, the other thing that happened was we finally saw a Martian landing, so there was a camera on Perseverance so we could see it land. We've never seen that before. Perseverance is a big deal, you guys. This was really cool to see. So, I had to spend a lot, lot of time talking about Mars this time around. Um, very, very interesting stuff. Makes me happy. I'm a moon girl, obviously, um, but I'm really excited to celebrate the success we're seeing on Mars. So, okay. I think we're, I think we've, <laughs> we've got Mars covered. The other thing I wanted to talk about this time is actually because of the International Women's Day on March 8th. Um, this is, this is another really cool thing, really exciting to see. Um, I want to talk about it as a woman in STEM. Um, many of you know, I am an engineer, which <laughs> I think we're finally up to female engineers being 27% of the workforce. And that's insane. That number, oh, it does not exist. That is not typically how many women you see in a STEM workforce uh, like engineering. It's usually close to like 15, 20%. So the fact we're up to 27% is cool. Um, and there's a lot going on with this. this. This day of celebrating women, it kind of brings up a lot for me because, hi, I'm a woman and I've experienced a lot of backlash in my career. Um, a lot of you know I'm, I'm more emotional. I enjoy talking about emotions and things like that. And that's not everyone, especially in engineering. So um, I really wanted to touch on this, that 
uh, women in STEM. What does that mean? And I had to give it a lot of thought because you see a lot of different women in STEM, especially on social media. Um, a lot of the women in STEM you see are very feminine who are also very smart. Um, and I love that. I love that so much. You, you can wear a dress and do science. It's so true. Um, but I, what I really wanted to hit home for people is that you can be that or you can, or you can be whatever. Like when it comes to being a woman in STEM, there is no guidelines there's no rules you don't have to be what people think of when they think of women in stem you you can be completely yourself and you don't actually even really like have to have a stem degree you know what i mean you can be doing stem things um whether that be science communication uh or just like engineering in your backyard because you think it's interesting like there's so many ways to get involved and when it comes to that you, you know you really have to drill into what it means to be a woman in stem and I came down to basically, I'm going to narrow it down to this. I think you need to be inquisitive and curious and kind of have that STEM mindset of you want to learn, you want to figure out how things work. Um, I think that's the criteria. I think you need to be, I think, I think you need to be proud and excited and supportive. I think when we're talking about women in STEM, that's one of the new criteria we need to have. Um, I've experienced a lot of backlash in my career and a lot of it surprisingly has not been from the older generation of males. A lot of it has been women my own age or superiors. And I think it's time to kind of call out that and say, it's time for a, to, to call yourself a woman in STEM. You need to be supportive of other women in STEM. And the whole point of being a woman in STEM is to turn girls in STEM into women in STEM. So that's the movement I wanna see moving forward is just excited, happy, passionate, and letting people be exactly who they want to be. Um, so I think that's what I want. This is this is my message for International Women's Day. Um, and with that, I want to say thank you to all the male, male champions out there. We can't do it without you. So if you are male and you don't feel like you fit in with women in STEM, you can be a male champion because we need you. We appreciate you. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of what I wanted to say, I think. It's it's a very exciting time to be alive where women have this voice um, unparalleled to any time in history. And uh, real quick, I'm going to give you guys some women in space names for you to look up if, if you are interested in that. We've got Valentina Tereshkova, who was the first woman in space. Uh, she was a Russian cosmonaut. We've got Sally Ride, who was the first American woman in space um, in 1983. And she was also the first LGBTQ uh, T, uh, member it, going into space. It came out after her death that she was actually um, part of that, that community. So she's kind of got a double whammy there. We just didn't know about it until after she died. Um, we have Mae Jemison, who was the first African American in space. Uh, we, we just have so many. Uh, Eileen Collins was the first commander of the shuttle missions, which is a big deal because not only was she a woman in space, but she was also the leader of women in space. Um, that's pretty unparalleled too. So there's a lot of really interesting women. And moving forward, we've got Anne McClain, Christina Cook, Jessica Meir, all these women who are most likely going to go to the moon. And one of them is going to be the first female on the moon. So that's exciting to see. And that's the light I want to see uh, on International Women's Day. You know, the future of, yeah, we've been through some struggles, but we're going to push through and just be proud of who we are doing things because we know we can. So there we go. There's your STEM Sunday. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys next month and see what happens. So we'll talk to you then and happy International Women's Day. Bye, guys.